And finally, while the last year has been miserable for many people, one bright spot has been the work of Meggie Foster, an internet sensation on TikTok, who's used lip syncing to hilarious effects, sending up our politicians and celebrities, often from her own bedroom. The lockdown may have temporarily halted her budding career as a stage actor, but it's made her a star online and a cult hero at Westminster. I started by asking Meggie Foster how she got into this lip syncing comedy. Well, the inspiration from my sort of lip synced videos actually uh, is type of verbatim theatre, which I've always been interested in. And that's basically taking real life conversation words and, and creating a play out of it. And I've always been sort of fascinated with it. I'm really interested in taking words from, I don't know, politicians, royal family members, celebrities, and taking it completely out of context and making a funny scenario out of it. But yeah, it's, it's been reaction to, to me making Pretty Patel a drunk teenager has been um, quite overwhelming. <laughs> so basically, you, you're just starting out in your acting career. Lockdown came along, coronavirus, which normally be a total disaster. But for you, it's been almost well, the making of your career, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's been a complete whirlwind. I've, I mean, I, was, I am a trained actress and I've always sort of tried to crack the industry, but as many actresses and actors will know, it's such a competitive industry. In terms of how this all came about in terms of my acting stuff, it, it's a big wake up call, I think, to any creatives, whether you are a dancer, a singer, an, an actor, a chef, that you can kind of do it on your own. You don't have to wait for the phone to ring anymore. You can create your what in my case sketches on an iPhone and and put them on the internet and not to say that they'll always get picked up but you can, you don't have to wait for the phone to ring how do you choose your victims my victims that is do you know what <laughs> it's it, I do it out of love it's quite affectionate in a way so it's it's no malice behind any of these um, but how I choose them so I mean I realized that there was people were interested in the po politics ones and I think again it goes back to me taking the words and putting them into a different context because they are so ridiculous. Like, I don't know, me taking Boris Johnson's daily brief and splicing it with audio from Theresa May and making it Boris telling Theresa a bedtime story. I sort of, well, I watch a lot of clips. I watch a lot of past interviews like Natalie Bennett, Diane Abbott, Caroline Flint, Emily Thornberry, but there are iconic clips that I've also done um, from previous years. Are you surprised that political comedy as such a big market and do you think it's something to do with the fact we're in these sort of fairly dark times and people are looking for a bit of light I, relief we i mean we still are in dark times and i think laughs are very scarce at the moment but i mean satire in itself is always relevant britain has a long history of using political cartoons and stuff to make make light of serious points about the world today not to say that i'm making a point but i think my videos are sort of like the live action political comic book in a way so, yeah, I think that that's why they've done so well. And I think that people do need a laugh these days. And, and I'm glad that I've, I've made at least a few people laugh. <laughs> Who's your favourite one for, for taking off? Um, I think the, it's, it's I, Pr Pretty Patel in my um, drunken state is probably my closest to my alter ego. <laughs> but I think I love doing the Meghan Markle ones just because I find them really funny. I just, um, so, yeah. I hope, I hope Pretty stumbles over her words a bit more soon. <laughs> and after the lockdown finishes, do you think you'll carry on doing this or can we expect to see you in the West End doing some theatre instead? I would love to, um, you know, I, my, my dream would be to be on TV or actually even sort of collaborate with professional script writers, comedy writers and create my own stuff whether that be a TV series and stuff. I'd love to be TV and film is where I want to go, but I do have a massive soft spot for theatre. It's where I started at school. I was in every single play. So if there's anyone out there listening that knows any comedy writers or script writers, I would love to collaborate and sort of come up with my own stuff. And hopefully I'll be on your TVs and screens one day. <laughs> Maggie Foster on Making the Most of Lockdown.